he watches on the streams and and he takes notes and he does like service patterns on every like he has a book of like every player you can think of like of just service patterns like weaknesses strengths like is Jordy in there? <laughs> I don't think Jordy's in there. I never played him, but he doesn't look beyond yeah. a thousand in the rap. No, he, he, yeah, I mean, I go like a lot of rap, like J Cole, Kanye, well, stuff like that. Rap does not align with, with prayer. With prayer. No, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. Deliver this. Oh, maybe I did see this actually. I did see this. Seen it. Oh my god. Oh, we're seeing it. Oh my, that's a joke. <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Changeable Podcast. I'm Jody. This is Justin. If this is your first time here, um, we have an exciting episode today. So, yeah, I think you guys are going to like it. So, if you can do us a favor and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Um, today, we have a, a guest that apparently is a fan favorite um, from Northport, New York. He's a three-time single All-American at The Ohio State University. Four times. Four time. Oh, excuse You're me. Good. Watch your mouth, boy. <laughs> 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 all good, all good. He, um, he's currently ranked 437 in singles, around 295 in doubles, and he's coming off a challenger win um, in doubles in Winnipeg. Our guest today is Kylan Kings. Kylan, kind of thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I've been watching the podcast for a little while now, so it's good to be here. Yeah, appreciate Lucky for it. you, this yeah. podcast has become a bit of a, of a good luck charm. We had a uh, Kova. After coming here, went up 100. We had Taylor Townsend yeah. won Wimbledon last week. Renata Zarazua went up 100. So, wow. you're welcome in advance once you, once you blow yeah. back to this. I, I, need, I need that good luck <laughs> yeah. right now. Man. Stuff yeah, out here. So. You come to the right place. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, congrats on, on Winnipeg last week. Good effort. Thank you. Thank you're in good form in dubs. Uh, won, what, Tulsa also? Yeah. Yeah, won two doubles tournaments in a row. So, that, nice. that was great. How, nice um, how important is doubles for you? Do you... Do you enjoy it? Do you focus on it? Or? Um, I mostly just enjoy it. Um, I mean, I'm not really totally focused on doubles. Obviously, like this week, I'm just playing singles because yeah. uh, that's the goal right now is to be a you know singles player. But, you know, if I have doubles results, that I mean, that's awesome. I mean, get some extra money. I mean, I think right now I'm up to about like 290 in the live rankings in doubles, so I'll take it, you know. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and this sure. is your first year, I guess, first summer playing fully on tour. Yeah. What's it been like for you? Uh, yeah, it's been a transition, definitely. Um, you know, I've been obviously like been playing pro for a while, like every summer and fall playing full time pretty much and coming back to school. So now it's a little different that I don't have that option anymore. So um, definitely transition for sure. So getting, getting adjusted to that. But what does it feel like? Does it feel like more pressure or is it um, you feel hungry? You just feel happy to be out there? It's a combination of both probably. Okay. Um Definitely more pressure just because, you know, you don't have that fallback option yeah. anymore. But, um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm learning to kind of – like I'm, I'm growing in, in, you know, how I'm approaching yeah. approaching the game now because, uh, you know, got to be more professional. You know, everything I do is just tennis. It's no school anymore, yeah. no, none of that. So it's definitely different. You took some time off after double A's or you went straight into tournament? Uh, I went pretty much straight in. I was going to play Little Rock. I took like maybe like a week. And then I played Tyler was my first tournament of the mm-hmm. summer. So I was maybe – like less than two weeks after into the okay. so yeah. What's the approach like for these tournaments compared to the, the matches in college? Um, I would say, I mean, well, approaching matches in college is kind of just, it's totally team-based. Like, yeah. it's not like I'm not going out and doing my own, like, dynamic stretch and doing, like, my own warm-up and my routines. It's more like, you know, the team does everything together kind of deal. So it's definitely different, like, kind of developing my own routines in yeah. that aspect. But, um. Yeah, I mean, I mean, with with Ty with with Ohio State, like you, everything is like structured very very well. Like you know, I have all the people setting everything up for you, yeah. and, and now I have to pretty much do that myself. So, it's so you're learning like what yeah. now what you want to do for you, like what what works yeah. for you, and not necessarily what would have worked for a team. Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. I mean, I have a few things that you know, like I've learned like over the years that I do that I you know always do before matches and stuff like that. But um, definitely like changing it up and trying to figure out what really works for me. Okay. Yeah. Cool. For sure. All right. So we're going to get started with the over under. So I'm going to give you okay. a topic and we're going to say, see if you think it's over or underrated and we'll discuss. <coughs> so pre match music. Ooh. Uh, you know, I'm going to say overrated. Okay. Um, I've actually been listening to music pre match this week. Okay. But 
I've kind of like done a little bit of both. Um, I've come to like, you know, the realization that like I, I need to be a little bit more like, like chilled oh, out like okay. before I go on the court. Okay. Sometimes I feel like when I listen to music right before I go out, I'm like crazy amped up mm-hmm. and I just like, I can't almost control it. And like okay. I go on the first game and I'm almost like a little bit nervous, you know? Uh, yeah, um, like I feel like that happened today a uh-huh. little bit in my match. Like I, I went out there, like I was like full volume in my earphones and like, <laughs> <laughs> going crazy. Like, Too much. Yeah, <laughs> and I, like, yeah, just missing short balls and like just a little bit over jittery. But, like over prime um, maybe. Yeah, over yeah. prime. But I've definitely, I've done, you know, in the past, I've done a lot of like um, just like meditation music, just like chill, like, um, I'm pretty big on like prayer, like before matches, yeah. um, like gratefulness, stuff like that. You know, I do, I mean, I've been doing kind of a mix this week of that and like the pumped up yeah, music sure. stuff. What kind of music is the pumped so, up music? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, to yeah, I mean, I go like a lot of rap, like J. Cole, Kanye, well, stuff like that. Rap does not align with... With the prayer. With the prayer. No, 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 exactly. Yeah, that's that's why. See, I'm adjusting. You know, I'm I'm you gonna, gotta, you gotta I'm, find I'm gonna it works for dog. me. So I'm I'm trying everything right now. To see what, see what works. So I think Jay Z might have to, uh, not Jay Z, Kanye, J Cole yeah. might have to take a back seat for next week. But uh, I'll definitely focus a little bit more on the on the meditation part. Yeah, I, think, you? I think the music. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm indifferent to this one because. Mm-hmm. I don't really have that much of a routine. Like sometimes, like in terms of music, like I used to do that every time, like put in music and try to get into a certain mood. But now I don't really, I don't pay too much attention to that anymore. Mm-hmm. Like today I was listening to music just to enjoy it. But I listen to like today, like happier music. But I've been in those phases where I listen to rap and that sort of stuff. But mm-hmm. It's kind of whatever it feels like. Yeah. Yeah, I normally listen to Dazzo to be, to be honest. But I don't know. What do you listen to? Dance all is like it's Caribbean. Caribbean. Oh, uh, okay. Like the so equivalent kind of chill, to like hip hop, but in the Caribbean, I would say. Okay. It's more like that. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I've mixed up my music. I mean, like some like EDM, like stuff like that. I mean, um, yeah, usually it's hype though. I mean, mm-hmm. sometimes it'll be a little bit more chill, but. I feel like that depends on the mood that you want to be in when you play. Yeah. Like maybe some people want to be like, like on edge and fiery. Mm-hmm. And maybe like what you're saying, we want to be more relaxed and calm. Yeah. Like if I was I was listening to happy music today, maybe I wanted to be in a mm-hmm. I didn't think of it, but maybe it could have been that I wanted to be in like a happy light kind of mood. I didn't feel mm-hmm. in a light mood, but you know what I mean? Like Yeah, I kinda I think it just align yeah. the music with the kind of mood that you want to be in when you play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think I think for me that I definitely need to be in a good mood before yeah. I go on the court. I think, you know, a lot of times there's things that go on outside of the tennis that can like interfere with your mindset going into a match, like, you know, problems girlfriend problems with you know home family problems. like signing up for <laughs> tournaments what'd you say i don't have those problems no <laughs> 99 problems but uh <laughs> all right you know, yeah. hey jay-z is taking the back seat <laughs> yo yeah. so if you let's say your match starts in in 30 minutes what does the routine look like walk, walking up to the match like what are you doing um so i mean like today for example uh i kind of was chilling um i'd say 30 minutes before the match chilling like in the grass, you know, um, I like to do like a little bit of grounding. Feet sucks out. Feet, sucks feet, out, feet, feet in the grass. Got yeah. the grippers in the grass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it feels good. Very so. spiritual guy over here. Yeah, like a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm experimenting. But yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, so, so, that, so that's I what I did today. Too what? But, uh, you grounded in the feet too? I mean, I had the socks off. I was in the grass. Yeah. Like, just, yeah there's a, there's a lot of grass around, so. Yeah. It's, yeah, you know, it's when you have your shoes tied all the time. It's like you, I don't know. You need to relax a little bit, especially like you don't know when you're gonna go on. Like mm-hmm. in these tournaments, like it's just yeah, it's you can go on in three hours or in twenty minutes. So, um, but yeah, I mean, just chill in the grass, do all my stuff, you know, drinks, uh, you know, racket, stencil, grips, everything, and then I'd say probably like whenever I'm like ten, fifteen minutes away, then I usually put on the headphones, start doing like some movement, you know, some stretch, some, stre- some stretching. Tiny. Yeah. What's that? Some J. Cole or some kind yeah, of... Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> run around a little bit, sprint, do some, uh, I don't know, some jumps. I don't know. I got to weight my racket, swing, it, swing that around so the racket feels light mm-hmm. on the court. But, um, yeah, that's about it. Nothing, nothing too fancy. But. You, I saw you this week reading reading from a notebook on the changeovers. Mm-hmm. When, I, when do you prepare that? Is it, and what do you write in? Um, so I have, like, a lot of stuff that I've written, like, over the last, I've had that book for maybe a year now. Mm-hmm. So I have some like some things that I've 
read for a while now, and I have some things that I write, like a little bit I write before I go on the court, but mm-hmm. I don't look at that as much. Okay. It's more just for me to like write things down so my, my brain's like in that state. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as like what I'm looking at on the court, usually it's like I have a few like Bible verses that I, I go to mm-hmm. that kind of calm me down a little bit um, or like help me feel more confident on the court. Okay. Um, and then, you know, once in a while, if I'm, if I'm feeling like, you know, like something's wrong with my game, like my forehand's not working, my serve's not working, like I have like a, a page where it's like, okay, like this is like like basic things, like just mm-hmm. to remember, like, you like know, cues, like, like yeah, like little cues. cues, like not like too detailed so that I'm like confusing myself in the court, but uh, just just something to like reassure me, like, okay, like just, you know, mm-hmm. forehand, like like legs, like all like simple stuff like that. You just know? to keep yourself. So yeah. most of the time, <clears throat> excuse me, most of the time it's not that, it's more like for your emotions, like, yeah. Exactly. And then every now and again, you go to mm-hmm. those cues. Yeah, it's mostly, I'm mostly like, for example, like today, like I was, I was big on uh, Psalm 46, verse 10, uh, just be still and know that I'm God, was the one that I was kind of reading a bunch this week specifically. Um, so that's kind of just for me to like, like be still, like kind of chill, like don't yeah. like get too riled up, like serving for the set. Cause I had a few matches early this summer. Actually, I had three matches in a row serving up 5-3 and getting broken mm-hmm. and so that was a, a problem I was dealing with and and that verse has kind of helped me through that a little yeah. bit so yeah. Yeah, but, are you a really religious person? Um, I'd say I'm, I'm decently religious I mean I've, I've gotten more religious over the last couple of years um, I've always like considered myself a Christian but um, I would say in the, in the last maybe two years I've really like tried to like learn a little bit more And how do you practice if you don't mind me asking? um like, you just just, yeah, I, I study the Bible a little bit. Um, you know, I have a, a few people that I talk to okay. that kind of uh, help me with that as well. Um, actually, this week I'm here with Jordan Belga, okay. and um, I kind of met him through a Bible study program. That's it's like a bunch of tennis players that are in it, a bunch of guys in the pro tour, like coaches and stuff like that. So we connected through that. I tried uh, twice now that I tried to, like, I don't know if experiments is the right word, but, like, to do research. So I started reading the Bible, Mm -hmm. and I've been, like, maybe two or three weeks in of reading a few verses every night, and I always fall off. So is that the best way you think? It's like, because I started right to the beginning. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's tough. I mean, if I'm, like, starting the Bible from scratch, I would probably start somewhere in the New Testament. So, like, the Old Testament is very, like, a lot of just, like, drags out, and you you get lost in the words and stuff. It's tough to read, but... um, yeah, I'm not like an expert on the Bible, but <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I'm learning too. It's a tennis but, podcast, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, in the comments below what's the best way to get it. <laughs> no, I have a yeah. question about that because I grew up Christian as well. And mm-hmm. With my mother, we always, we pray before we do everything. Mm-hmm. And I always pray before I go on the court too for matches. And I'm wondering, like, what is your prayer consist of? Do you pray for a win? you just praying for health and good performance? Like, what is, where, do, where do your prayers go? Yeah, no, I mean, I don't really pray for winning. Yeah. I think that's kind of like a selfish way to go about it. Like, <laughs> God, God let win. me win, please. <laughs> like, like, I don't think he's going to listen to me if I just has to win all the mm. time. Uh, but mostly just, like, gratefulness. Like, like thank you. Like, like wow, like, look at like, the grass. Like, look at the sky. Mm. Like, all this stuff. Like, like, thank you for life, family, like, all that stuff. Mm. And that's pretty much it. I just I just pray to, like, to have my best ability on the court and... Mm. And um and fight. That's pretty much it. I like it. Yeah, man. Next one. College tennis over underrated. And I asked this because before you went to school, I I saw that you were already five ninety three in the world. And that was transition tour. <laughs> oh, really? That wasn't ah, real. So I wasn't really that high. Okay. okay. <laughs> we're and you were horrible at our research. I was over two. No, but I'm mine was right. actually accurate. Yeah. Well, no, it's true. I was five ninety three, yeah, yeah, but like I'm, I was really like a thousand something. But okay, okay. Yeah. And then you were highest ten in the world in juniors. So mm-hmm. for were you? Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. So for so for players who have like sort of pedigree as a junior, how how useful do you think college tennis actually is? Uh, well, I guess underrated, I would say. But yeah. Um, yeah, no, college tennis is huge. I mean, if you just look at how many how many guys are on tour now mm-hmm. that went through college tennis, it's I don't know the number, but it's at least like I don't know how many are in the top hundred right now. Yeah, it's a lot. Ten, twelve, mm-hmm. thirteen, something like that. But I would um, say it's increasing. It's increasing. Like, yeah, like, it's increasing. Yeah, no, definitely. And, um, yeah, I mean, it helped my development a lot. Like, I was a pretty good junior, but, like, my pro success was 
pretty minimal. I mean, like I, like for example, like my last year in juniors, I made first, like beginning of the year, I made quarterfinals Australian Open and finals of doubles. And I went and after that, I was like, all right, I'm going to start playing like some pro events. Mm-hmm. And I, I got like wild cards into main draws. And I think I lost six or seven straight first rounds in 15 Ks like, yeah. back to back to back to back. And I was beating like top 10, top 20 juniors. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of like a, like a moment for me. Like I realized like, okay, like I need some, some serious like development. Like these guys are a lot bigger, a lot stronger, <laughs> mentally stronger. And um, yeah, no, I think that, uh, I mean, there's just exceptions, obviously, to the rule. I mean, for there's sure. some juniors that, that pop off on pros, but for the most part, it takes them a long time. It takes them gen- genuinely, like, uh, generally probably around, like, four years, the amount of time that you're in school to, like, really break through. Mm-hmm. Um, except for, like, unless you're, like, Alcaraz or yeah. Rooney or Just something like that. Crochet yeah. through. Exactly. And even after, so you were a four-time All-American. You played four years in school or you played f- I uh, played five years, yeah. So even once you got to that point, you still felt it was worthwhile to stay? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, well, I mean, for my last year, like, staying was a little bit of a different reason than mm. than why I went to college in the first place. Yeah. Like, it wasn't because I didn't feel like I was ready to play pro. Mm-hmm. It was more just, like, as far as helping me um, towards, you know, being able to finance myself as a pro and also just because I, I love my time at school and I wanted to help the team try and win a national championship my last year. So probably those those two things were, were the main reason why yeah. I stayed for the fifth year. Um, and NIL was already in, in effect for your last year? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's been in effect for, I don't know, how many years? Three three years? Maybe? So long. Five yeah. years? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I didn't know about it before. I, it didn't yeah, exist. Sure, he didn't. <laughs> so, I, don't, I guess I don't want to pry too much, yeah. but the... When you stayed in school, was NIL money substantial? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. It, was it was pretty. Successful. It was enough, you know, to incentivize me to to, to stay. stay. Yeah. Um, in addition to obviously trying to win a, a so national championship. Do you program. feel like a like a Ohio State employee when they're paying you <laughs> to, to be there, or like what is it? Uh not really. I mean, it's not like the school was paying me. Okay. You know, I'm getting paid through you know deals with donors of the school. Mm. Um, like I was posting maybe like once a month for a car dealership. Okay, that That's was cool. yeah. So it's like a, I know well, one you of the guys. They drive around campus. No, <laughs> they didn't give me a car. Okay, okay. I wish they gave me a car. Maybe if I stayed a six year, they give yeah. me a car. <laughs> but um, yeah, no. So like that was like one of the deals I had. Um, you know, another deal like I, I had a free apartment for my last semester, which was huge. Yeah. It was like one of the guys, uh, Brett Kaufman. He he owns a bunch of apartments around Columbus. So. Okay. Um, you know, Ty does a really good job of of getting guys uh, in, you know, the donors for the program. They're there every single day at the courts at, like, 8 a.m., grinding on the courts and, wow. and ties feeding them balls, you know, um, Crow and all those guys. And, and they really put a lot of effort in, into uh, financing the program and uh, NIL and all that stuff. Is so. any part of you staying to help Ty get his first uh, national championship with the team? Yeah. Was yeah. a big part of it? Yeah, it was a big part. Yeah. You know, we, we, got, we won a national indoors, which was cool, but yeah. – um, w- would have definitely loved to win the win the whole thing, but you know, it's only one team wins it, man. It's, yeah. it's tough, it's tough out there. But yeah, yeah, man. All right. So we talk a lot about like nutrition and stuff. Okay. But I guess people don't talk as much about hydration. So I want to know: is hydration over or underrated in your mind? Underrated. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And like, I mean, what are you doing to stay hydrated when you're out there? And when does your hydration start for much? Um. Gosh, I mean, I guess it starts the night before. Okay. I mean, obviously it depends where you are. I mean, if you're playing in Florida in the summer, like, or NCAAs this last year was in Oklahoma State. It was 100 degrees, you know. Uh, you got to be, I mean, on it the night before. I mean, I've experienced cramping and all that stuff. Uh, you know, I'm big on, like, salt. I think salt's huge. I mean, I take two salt pills before I go on the court every time just to make sure I don't cramp. And I yeah. always got pickle juice in my bag as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got like li- little pickle yeah, shots in there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I mean that's huge. I got electrolyte powders and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean you have you got to hydrate. Yeah. <laughs> night, yeah, okay. night before you drinking the electrolytes and stuff, or just yeah, water? I got like a couple like different things. Like, I got like a, some amino acids and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I take creatine as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, on the court, I'm just taking like liquid IV uh, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, Halo hydration. So. Different different things I'm trying out. So, Would you? Yeah. Are you, Julie? I agree. I think it's underrated. I think I don't do it yeah. enough, but 
I, mm. I feel a difference and I don't cramp, but like I hit a wall. So like mm. I would, I was playing in uh, Tabasco against Tawheed and I lost the first, I think I could see that he was dying and I went up a break or maybe even a double break. I don't remember. I was about four, one or five, one or something. And I know that he was dying and I literally just hit the wall and I was just, the match was over. Mm. So yeah, I believe. And I already, I sweat a lot too. So and I, I feel it's underrated. Underrated about hydration too is like mental clarity. Like when you, you get cloudy. Yeah. And once you get the salt and magnesium and stuff in and you have enough liquid in you, pause. Um, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> you actually, your, your brain fog goes and you can actually think more clearly. And you it's like when I'm dehydrated yeah. like after a match and I drink element, it happens quick. Where like, you feel much more alert. Uh, yeah. 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 Element's good. That's like the super high sodium one, right? Yeah. You get a bleep okay. that they're trying to get sponsored by something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to get sponsored too, man. Yeah, element, if you want yeah, to, element. please. Yeah, let's do it, man. <laughs> All right, and I got one more for you. Uh, overrated or underrated? Scouting opponents and or getting information from other players on how to play somebody? Uh, extremely underrated. Underrated, think, okay. Yeah. Um, I've been doing scouting. That's like a huge, huge part of like my preparation for matches. Um, my dad is a tennis coach. He taught me how to play tennis really? like, when I was whatever, two years old, three years old. and. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like all he does now is like he watches on the streams and and he takes notes and he does like service patterns on every like he has a book of like every player you can think of uh-huh. like of just service patterns like weaknesses strengths like Is Jody in there? No, I don't think Jody's in there. I never played him, but he doesn't look beyond yeah. a thousand in the round. No, he, he, trust me, he does. He does. Every like, he'll he'll try and scout anyone I play. Like he'll he'll look all over the place for video and like mm. and we'll always talk about it the night before the match. Um, you know, I've actually, I take back what I say about extremely underrated because mm-hmm. I think, I think sometimes it can get a little bit too like complicated in your yeah. head and you think about it too much. Like, okay, this guy's going to like serve here and then he doesn't and you're like freaking out. Like, yeah. why is this guy not serving yeah. there? Um, but I think it's good to have like a little bit of like mental clarity going into the match as far as like, okay, like what this guy like wants to do, yeah. uh, what like his plan is and try and execute your plan. Mm-hmm. To, they cannot be able to do that, but. Yeah, for um, me, I almost find it as sort of overrated in the sense, like, sometimes, especially when it comes from, like, asking another player who just played the person. Yeah, that's tricky. Because that person plays different than I do mm. and has different strengths and weaknesses than I do, so that person might play them differently. And then and I the play... Opponent, the opponent also may perceive you as a completely different person than they perceive the other player. Yeah, for sure. So then, and also my strengths and the way I like to play might be a good or bad matchup for this person. So mm-hmm. sometimes when I take someone else's advice, it doesn't really mold to my game as well. Mm-hmm. Or I might not be able to do what that person does. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, if they like to keep the ball low from the back or something, and they try to tell me that that's what works against that guy, for me, that's useless. Because mm-hmm. my balls are, like, spinny and whatever. So, yeah. I feel like it's good to know the guy's tendencies, for sure. Mm-hmm. But I don't like to know, let's say, too much. Mm-hmm. But I think it's also different when, when you have a coach scouting for you or someone that you trust who knows your game really well because maybe they they can take something mm-hmm. complex yeah. and simplify it for you so you don't yeah. think too much about yeah. it and then if you're also like on the road with a coach maybe they see something during the match that they can give you information at a good time because I feel mm-hmm. like sometimes when you know too much too early like you said like you're expecting yeah. certain things and they aren't there all the time yeah exactly and it might like psych you up a little bit yeah. I mean I, I always try and like watch someone like if I'm I'm scouting someone watch them play someone that's similar to me exactly. I guess yeah. like if someone's playing a lefty like I'm not gonna watch that yeah. I mean sometimes my dad will give me notes and it'll be like playing a lefty I'm like why, why are you sending me this? Like, yeah. like, <laughs> serving everything to it the guy's back in yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I don't know but um, I, I agree with you for sure yeah. I think it, it really depends on the person and um, yeah I mean I'm, I'm just so used to it because my dad's been doing it for me like mm-hmm. since I was like in junior so sure. um but yeah, but you know it's funny about the coaching thing. Uh, our coach Beggy, he watches the episodes, and it's been a few episodes where I've said how important it is to have a coach on the road, mm-hmm. and then you just said it also. So Beggy, if you're watching this time, it wasn't me; it was Justin. You know, saying how valuable a coach is on the road and scout and that sort of stuff. Get on the road, man. Yeah, please. <laughs> you don't like us at all. What's going on? Um, I, feel I was like, gonna say I something that's like, oh, Do you remember the episode we did with Rob Galloway? No, like, he was okay. No, of course I do. Your phone died halfway through. That's why I even remember. But he was saying that one of the things he was looking for in a partner um, 
like coming up, like getting to the slabs, that sort of stuff, with someone who would sit down and look at film and look at their own film, but also scout opponents because in doubles, I mean, it's no ad and the momentum can change so fast. Yeah. So it's, it's important for the doubles players, in his opinion, to know the tendency. So he, yeah. I think he is one that does a lot of research and looks at like the other players. So I think in doubles, yeah. maybe it gets more valuable at the higher level to know because things can change so fast. In yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I think um, I think watching yourself play too is is pretty important. I mean, it's like I think it's the hardest thing to do is after you lose a match to go watch yourself play because it's like the last thing you want to think about. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. I'm curious when it comes to like the scouting and stuff. Are you thinking about that stuff as much in your service games? Because I feel like you serve big. Mm-hmm. And the game was pretty much like serve by trying to get a short ball on attack. Yeah. Obviously, if the rally sort of breaks, like the start over from scratch, then of course you think about where you're directing the balls. But are you, are, is it scouting more for the return games and how you can try to break? Yeah, I would say probably more for the return games. Yeah. Um, as far as yeah, service games, I mean, I'm just trying to hit my spots and look for four ends, you for know, sure. trying to attack. But yeah, I mean, if I can get like any edge, if I'm playing up a huge server, you know, mm-hmm. just like to have a general idea, like this guy is like, his serves are a little more effective when he's going T like on the ad than if he's going wide maybe he'll miss a few more you know just try yeah yeah, just try and I mean get a little bit of an edge but I think obviously you gotta adjust as the match goes on like Mm -hmm. if the guy's just popping wide serve wide serve wide serve you gotta like take it away yeah you gotta take it away I mean it's just you gotta be you gotta be thinking out there for sure sure I think also going back to the match cam um, thing I might have mentioned it on a previous episode but Josh and I were in Tunisia couple months ago and we played the first match in Tunisia and we felt like we're getting passed down the middle a lot mm-hmm. like if we're both at the net we're passed through the middle so we said like <laughs> you go past through the middle with a behind the back lob what <laughs> 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 did you see that or no no is that a video where's my phone let me show you this video behind <laughs> wait wait behind the back just, yeah just, just watch just watch this yeah just it watch that, bro. Right Wait, who, had, who, had the, who had the overhead in the middle, though? Was it was it you? Was it the right? So you no, went no, went through the middle, or no, what? Here we go. Here we go. Just just look <laughs> at this. Where's the? Where's this video? How many? Oh, here it is. Yeah. Take a look at this. <laughs> oh, maybe I did see this actually. I did see <laughs> this. Have seen it? Oh my god. Oh, we're seeing it. Oh my god. That's a joke. <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's crazy. Back to what I was saying. Sorry. Um, <laughs> in Tunisia, Josh and I were getting passed in the middle the first mm-hmm. week. We got killed. So then we said, next week we're going to adjust and we're not going to get passed down the middle anymore. Even if like, mm-hmm. even if we cover the wrong sides of the court, at least let them hit around us. And someone was watching, one of our friends was watching, they was taking some videos of the match and there was still way more space than I thought there was. Yeah. So I felt like we were closing. I felt like we cut off a space. But then, objectively watching the match after, we weren't cutting off the space. So then the next the next match, we're literally, like, holding hands in the middle. Like yeah. We're not going to get passed down the middle. So that also goes to show that, like, emotionally, you might feel like you're doing something, but you're not actually doing it. You know what I mean? So yeah. No, I think definitely. that's why also the match stuff, the film is important to watch yourself after the match. And that's not something mm-hmm. that's that easy to do at the future. So they don't stream all the matches. and. Yeah. It's tedious to like put up stuff and, and record. That's so it's much cool. of tennis though, because like sometimes let's say you you want to approach the guy's backhand on match, and he burns you with one backhand line, and then emotionally you might give him too much credit and be like, I can't go there anymore. Mm. And now you start making bad decisions and going to the forehand when the right play might be, let's go there thirty times and see how many times he can he can he can pass me. Yeah. So I think a lot of times in tennis we. We rely too much on how we feel as opposed to maybe taking the emotions out of it and seeing what's actually happening. And I think that that's yeah. sometimes where matches are won and lost and like these small margins. Yeah, that's you know, that's where like I feel like it, it helps having a coach with you on mm-hmm. the road, like because some like like you said, like you watch yourself on film and it's like you're not closing the space in the middle. Yeah. Or like even like today in my match, like I like exactly what you just said yeah. actually like i, I say we're, we're, we're supposed to do out here yeah again the tiebreaker yeah, yeah yeah i first point like i i ripped like i don't know how many forehands in a row and then i came in on the guy's backhand yeah. and and he passed me cross and i was i was just like wow what like, do i do yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. um but that's like yeah me me acting on feelings yeah. instead of For like sure. what's actually happening in the match if you go there 20 times he's not going to pass you yeah 14 no. there's no way yeah or even 11 i don't think 
Yeah, exactly. That's why he was slicing most of the day, I think. Yeah. Because he's not comfortable coming over the backhand. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, in those big pressure situations, you feel like the stress can make it hard to see what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I guess probably the the better players are better at committing to, I guess, the right stats or whatever the right play is, even if it's, they end up losing the match, but they're willing to die with yeah. with the right players, I think. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. also with the, the film conversation and trading like a month ago, Beggy asked me one day, he's like, how do I best learn? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, are you like, can I explain something for you, to you and can you do it? Or are you a visual learner? Do you need to see the video? You need to see yourself doing something to see. And it's like, that's not something I thought about that much in the past. And like, I believe when you look at other sports, like football, soccer, um, I don't know about baseball, how that works, but like a lot of these other sports, these kids from a young basketball. age, basketball, they get a lot of film. And in tennis, you don't really get that much film. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's not something that people think about growing up. But like, because yeah. I remember when I was in Texas at the dance, like Taylor Dance Academy, yeah. Yeah. he used to, like when he had privates, he used to take out his phone sometimes and record. And like Phil, his dad used to do the same thing and record and like show the person like what they're doing wrong, what they should do. And I just think that's not something that's that common in, in tennis. And, and tennis players don't see enough of that like yeah. over and over again. So I believe... And especially with me, I believe I'm a visual learner. Like I, mm. I feel like I'm doing something, but I really don't know until I see it. And I'm like, okay, I was doing something wrong. I need yeah. to adjust, blah, 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 blah. You know, so mm. I think it's important. No, I think stuff, I'm, I'm the same way, I think. I think most of us are probably visual learners. Um, I mean, it's hard to just like It doesn't hurt something. to see it, even if you are necessarily a visual learner. Yeah. It can't hurt to actually see what's happening. Yeah. It's funny, you it's remember, you remember Liam um, in Texas? Yeah. Taylor Dan's son, he must have been like. Have eight, you seen him hit? Eight years old. No, uh, maybe I saw a video of it yeah, actually. Did you post it? Yeah, you yeah, posted it, yeah. yeah. But like when he was like seven, eight years old, you can tell him whoever to serve. You can be like, show me Kyrios to serve, and he can uh, do it. Like he can, wow. he can just do Master the Master imitation? Yeah. I'm, I'm not bad at that as well. I do some <laughs> oh, imitations, really? yeah. He used to, um, I think Team used to be his favorite player. So okay. at one point, he was looking a little bit like team maybe now he has his own identity a little bit more yeah but, but yeah that was pretty funny yeah at a young age i mean you just kind of you copy who like your favorite player is yeah. i feel like i did that probably you probably did just that absorb, too yeah. just absorb yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need to get mature i used to watch, watch a lot of youtube actually like watch like federal slow mos and hitting balls and stuff and mm -hmm. for sure i think we just watch and we kind of mold to whatever i guess we're drawn to yeah all right, so you have, what is it now? It's July, end of July. You're going to play out. Do you, do you get any advantages with, like, uh, what is this thing called? The accelerator program? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I missed it by one spot. So. No way. Yeah, I, didn't, I finished 20, the... 21 in the rankings, so. Wow. Yeah. But maybe yeah, USTA yeah. helps you out, you think? Or what's the... Yeah, I mean, USTA, I mean, it kind of just depends on how you do in the tournaments uh, in the summer. So, like, if you have a good week, make yeah. a final, win a 25 or something like that, then they'll give you a card maybe next week in a yeah. challenger or something like that. But okay. um, it's definitely, like, result-based. Do you have um, any plans or goals for the year? Have you thought about it at all? Um, yeah, I mean, as far as goals, I mean, I'm kind of just, um, you know, I'm not really setting any, like, specific goals. Like, I want to be this ranking, this ranking, but... Um, definitely want to use this year as kind of like a transition phase where I'm just, you know, getting better, experiencing like the tour life, kind of getting everything set up as far as like where I want to train, like coach I want to work with, like who I want to train with, stuff like that. Because it's a lot like to figure out and I'm, I'm still kind of working through it, you know, um, trying out different coaching situations yeah. and, and all that. So, um, but yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, but, so not too strict um, on the goals. Yeah, not too strict on the goals. I mean, obviously, um, I want to, you know, be playing challengers. Yeah. I mean, next next year definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to play, be, being full time in the challengers. But okay. um, if not, you know, I'm I'm here for for the long haul. I think, yeah. you know, I, I love tennis. I mean, it's my life. So nice. um, I'm I'm willing to to stick it out. Definitely. Have you always been? that guy with who's not that strict on goals and kind of just focus on improving or is it ever like I don't know let's say a year ago at Ohio State you start the season and you're like I want to be top 10 in college mm -hmm. or how do you 
Yeah, no, I definitely, I think in college, I definitely had goals like that, like like being top 10, being top 20, getting All-American, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think that, you know, having goals like that, like physical, like ranking-wise goals, I think it hurts, honestly, overrated. in the end. I think it's overrated, yeah. We go another, <laughs> another overrated, underrated question. There. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think it's overrated for sure. Okay. Setting, uh, like, specific ranking goals. Hurts, hurts you... Adds pressure. Yeah, I think it adds pressure mm. for sure. I think you're just constantly looking at you know, oh, okay, I moved up like two spots in the ranking. Oh, I moved up, you know, I moved down. Like ignoring what's actually important. It's just unnecessary. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Like I, I mean, I don't have, I don't set those kind of goals. But even on a week like this week where I'm defending, mm-hmm. I'm defending 15. Yeah, and I've looked every day, like looked at the live rankings, like mm-hmm. looking at just all the time. I'm looking at that stuff, and it's unnecessary. Yeah. Like, luckily, I've done well. I had a good week. I'm in the finals so far. But, like, it, it definitely added more anxiety than it needed to just by me paying attention to that when mm-hmm. you made a good point. Like, my level is high enough that even if I don't defend this week, I, I'm i playing good enough to to yeah. do well next week or the week after. Yeah. You know? There's a Lubicic clip I saw on Instagram where he says, like, if Yannick Sinner lost all his points today and he started and he just trained for six months and he came back, it would have taken very long to be back in the top 15 in the world, top 10 in the world, whatever. Mm-hmm. Same with Sweet Attack, he said. So he said, you can focus on rankings and all this stuff, but the most important thing is your level. If you, if you have the level yeah. and you're healthy enough to play, eventually you will get to where you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So he's saying, like, we should prioritize, let's say, the process and the level over ranking goals, which I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely like what I'm trying to adopt right now because I, just like you, like, I'm looking at the live rankings all the time, like, looking at all that stuff. Like, I'm defending, like, I think these next two weeks I'm defending like 46 points or something. Yeah. So I find something. Like <laughs> 40, 46. 44, 46. 46.25. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's it's tough. Like, you, you can't be doing that. I mean, like, I obviously, like, I was playing pro maybe like five months out of the year. So, like, every week I'm pretty much defending right now yeah. until I start again in January where I, you know, you don't defend for. I guess six months since I was in college, but that's tricky though because like, I mean, I know I had this, and also Blaze also had this because we spoke recently about it. Like, you don't want to get fooled by the months or weeks that you're not defending, and mm-hmm. you look at it as such a good opportunity that maybe you put pressure on yourself. Yeah, you know? so like, exactly. Realistically, you need to, in my opinion, to try your best to not look at that stuff. Like, I'm guilty mm-hmm. of it because I did it all week, but like. And I'm going to do it again in September. Hope, you can like, do it tonight. <laughs> right, yeah. after, right after we come off this episode. No, no. I, I've defended. I'm good. I actually have a plus one right now on the week. So Let's go. But, um, but yeah, because Blaze was saying the same thing. Like Blaze did really well to end last year. And then he did well at the beginning at Indian Wells. And then he saw this next period of months that he didn't play between early in the year and maybe June. Mm-hmm. And then maybe he got a little complacent and... You know, yeah. he wasn't as hungry, and then all of a sudden, four months goes goes around, and now you're defending again. You know, oh, so yeah. you kind of just have to stick to your process and your journey, and just just play. Therefore, yeah, I think if you get to where you want to get to, that's just gonna be a part of it. Like you, your top, whatever in the world, fifty, twenty, ten, whatever your goals are, you're gonna either you're gonna have small periods with a lot of points to defend, or you're gonna have consistently good results and you got to do that all year long so I think that pressure on how to deal with it or learning how to ignore it is just going to be a part of life yeah, yeah. got to kind of you know, just embrace it I, I guess yeah I, I don't, don't know but, I don't know what the difference was this week and before because like I felt anxious and I felt pressure to get through the week and I didn't do that last week like in, in Dallas obviously you saw mm-hmm. me get fucking <laughs> World star on Instagram, all over, all over Instagram. <laughs> yeah, well, but I, I was know. very upset <laughs> that week, and I was upset in Tulsa as well. I think I was in mm. your section of the draw in Tulsa. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys receded one, I think. Yeah, and yeah. I was, I was upset that he week thinks. too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he knows all or 16, something. He knows I, all sixteen teams. I'm trying to sound like I don't look at that stuff. Yeah. But I do. <laughs> you know exactly what's going on. <laughs> but yeah, I, I was saying that I didn't do as well those weeks of letting that go, and this week I don't know. Uh, I guess it was a calmness there. I was anxious, but I was more calm. And I, every match has been good. So, thank God, I guess. I, I thank the big man for getting me through. Yep. Awesome. Should we get some Instagram questions? Do it. The first Instagram question is from Chuchi. 
How strict is Ty Tucker? The guy seems like he make your boys walk home if you lost. <laughs> Bro. Uh, did I you play at Ohio State? Yeah. No, no, I'm going to ask him. I'm trying to set it up. Did I not just ask? Go on, go on, sorry. Okay. So, <laughs> I played at USF my first four years, and we had, like, this spring break tournament. And we had this... We were practicing, and then they were practicing, I think, on the course behind us. And intensity in the back there was crazy. And mm-hmm. I think it was the end of practice. And he had uh, Herco Polanen doing mm-hmm. this drill. And it was like, he had to like sprint from the baseline to the fence, baseline to the fence. And then he had to hit like a running forehand and play a point out or something like that. Yeah. He's laughing. That's, that's, he knows the drill. That's a, that's a very typical drill. So I'm not lying here. I'm, talk, I'm talking sense. <laughs> this man. So, and he said, and he's doing this for like 10 minutes. And now this guy's burnt. He's tired. And then Ty says, if Herco misses, any of uh, any in, in any of these rallies, either everybody had to do sprints or something. But it was like the whole team was riding on Her- Herco yep. playing solid tennis for the next whatever. <laughs> and I was like, dog, these guys just live with pressure. Like there's no. <laughs> 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 but the finish should be easy for him. Then. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Easy. But what I thought was interesting about it, and what I want to get to, was also that week I saw Martin Joyce walking onto the court. Because it's like around the corner, we had like a cold stone. Walking onto the court for the afternoon practice with a with a cup of cold stone ice cream. So I guess <laughs> to, 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 to Tucci's question, it's like... Oh my gosh. The way I view him, Tataka was like, do whatever you want, but when you're here in between these lines, you better be locked in. Yeah. I, is, and is that accurate? That's exact. That's that's very accurate. For okay. a guy that doesn't really, yeah. hasn't been in the program, but yeah, um, yeah I was laughing because that, that drill is like something we do a that's lot. A we're, different versions of that. Yeah. We're like, everyone's dead tired. Like we're running, we're running, we're running. And then he picks a random guy and he says, if this guy misses a ball in the next 25, we're all running again. Yeah, another one was like some crazy high lob. He, yeah. he had to hit it full speed. If you pushed it, yeah, it was no push. good. He would lob and you have to Like it. a deep lob. And yeah. like, I think they're playing doubles or something. And he's like, if, he misses it, we all run. Mm-hmm. And if you push it, we all run. Like, hit it. <laughs> but don't miss it. <laughs> it's funny, yeah. Yeah. No, but the second part of what you were saying with, like, Joyce walking on the court with ice cream, yeah. like, that's just, I mean, Ty's not really big on diet or anything mm-hmm. like that. He's okay. pretty old school. Like, he'll take us, like, after we win, we'll go, like, McDonald's. Yeah. That's, okay. like, our thing. Like, we go, like, victory McDonald's yeah. after we win, which, like, I'm not, like, a huge fan of, but, mm-hmm. you know, it was the thing that we did I was after every match. But, like, they're working so hard, um, this guy eating ice cream before practice. What's, <laughs> what is, what is going yeah, on? That's, that's wild. Win? Before practice, I, I, I can't say uh, anyone's done that. Storm, but, yo, I yeah. Like, what's going on? <laughs> that's nuts. Yeah. yeah. No, but, I mean, as far as, like, the question that uh, was asked – I mean, Ty is is strict, but he's. I mean, I have a very good relationship with him. Um, I think over the years, as I got, you know, became more of an upperclassman, he kind of uh, loosened up on me a little bit because I kind of knew the deal and like what I needed to do and like what he expected of me. Um, and I think that's just kind of how it works. Like for the guys that are coming in, like right now, like I know there's maybe five new guys on the team this year, and they're getting their ass kicked right now yeah. like they're out there every single day like ty's not giving them that they're not getting a day off like yeah. they're just they're working and that's just how it is like this is 20 hours a week yeah <laughs> yeah 20 hours exactly 20 hours <laughs> not one minute more yeah <laughs> no no and the but guy it, was wearing those big ass sweatpants in 110 degree weather yeah it's oh, every day yeah. every match day in the same yeah. Yeah. um a pen cup Mine is a he's got a Mc, uh, mcdonald's straw Oh, that's what it is now? Mouth, yeah. Okay. He's, like, super superstitious, so okay. um, he's got a lot of things like that that he does. Interesting. Does he have a philosophy into how you guys should play, or is it, like, yeah. is one through six any different, or everyone plays a similar way? What's the deal? I mean, in general, he has, like, a, a pretty, like, basic philosophy, like, as far as, like, double. Mainly, it's in doubles. You know, obviously, in singles, guys play different. Like, you know, What's Bernard's, like, five. Shit out the ball? Um, Even Bernard double- played <laughs> the shit out of the ball. I played two yeah. weeks ago, him yeah. and... Uh, JJ Tracy mm-hmm. murdered us. Oh, the mom's just well, cracking the ball. Yeah. hard as you can, but don't miss it. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> Simple philosophy, though. Yeah. Well, that's like all we do in practice is we go two on two, like two guys in the net, two guys in the two baseline, we'll do and just destroy the ball at the net guy. Like, just oh, rip it out of him. And, like, sometimes we'll do it, like, with the guy. Like, the guy at the baseline gets the feed, and he'll just throw up a lollipop, and the guys are just ripping. So it helps the reflexes, mm-hmm. the guys at the net, too. 
Um, but yeah, we do that drill so much, like just hitting the ball, but mostly like as far as philosophy, like he's big on like going where your body weight's going, um, like volleying down. Like he's not big on like angle cut volleys and mm-hmm. stuff like that, unless you can hit a winner. But that's, I mean, that's probably his main philosophy. Like if you're but, moving right, you're going to volley. Yeah, exactly. Like off the court that way, not like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and moving left, same thing. But, Interesting. Okay. Yeah. What would, uh, how bad were the punishments and what? earned you punishments like with if people were late or if put penalties in matches because i had some like at our team we had yeah. 6 a.m so i talked about on the podcast before where like if someone got a put penalty in a match we have to get up at 6 a.m and do a punishment mm-hmm. which is normally like some sort of sled pushes 400s or yeah that was thing ever did was we played an orange for an hour i that saw that one i saw yeah, that clip so like, <laughs> it's so, funny or we did pop-ups we missed for an hour in our mind and then we yeah, Who was your coach? Ball. You were Matt at Arizona Hill. State, or yeah, Matt Hill at USF Hill. and Arizona State. Yeah. Oh, USF and Arizona State. Yeah. Okay. You had any of that in Ohio State? Any of what? Oh, Peeling the oranges? The punishment? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't big on that one, but um, yeah, I mean, we had punishments, but we never had like six a.m. stuff like that. Um, I mean, Ty, I guess wanted to sleep. He didn't okay. want to he wake up that early. <laughs> make sure we're doing something at six a.m. But um, yeah, I mean, as far as like. I mean, most of it was just running. Okay. We do a lot of running. I yeah. mean, uh, our cardio got pretty good, you know, yeah. over the years. But nothing, like, crazy. I mean, most of the time, like, when, when someone would do something wrong on the court, we'll have, like, a meeting on the court. And it can take anywhere from 15 minutes to almost two hours. No way. You know, sometimes... <laughs> an exa- class, bro. example of like, like that's for definitely like, some rules, okay some so like for example <laughs> we we no that's don't, they don't count as hours yeah when, <laughs> when we're talking in the court <laughs> yeah. it, he starts the clock right when the first ball gets hit again <laughs> um, like I guess an example would be like JJ Tracy like he's great guy work hard worker mm-hmm. but sometimes he's a little bit like he'll, he'll you know forget where he is and he'll take a ball and just launch launch one like mm-hmm. Like there's been a couple occasions where he's like hit crow with like a like, like a loose overhead just like way off the court, and he'll hit tie like sometime one time he hit tie and we had a meeting on the court for I mean this was at all Americans I think, or maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong I don't remember but, um, we'll, we'll, we'll just we'll just talk we'll we'll meet for like, forty five minutes and we'll all be like on the line um, on the alley, and then we'll just be talking and then all of a sudden Ty will just be like go. And we all, and we all have to run. We're cold. We're so cold. Yeah. Like he doesn't care if we get injured or anything. We're just we run and then we come back and then the meeting like it's like nothing happened. Like we're still like talking. That's crazy. <laughs> Anybody? Because I know when you go to college, you become a young man and you feel like a big man. There are times where somebody lashes back. So let's say he gets yeah. in someone's face. Somebody. Any scenario like that that just comes to mind? Yeah, no. There's been plenty of occasions. I think everyone on the team that's happened really? to Really? Um, at What's some point. One? Um, gosh, I don't even know. I mean, I, I don't talk back that much. Okay. But God, that's a tough, tough, tough one. one. I mean, talking back is like like any little thing is considered talking back, mm-hmm. pretty much. Like if you just if you say something under your breath, like Ty says, like if I can't hear what you're saying, then you're talking shit. That's what he says. So we go on the line. Man, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, trust me. He's a, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Nobody ever like <laughs> shoved it back at him. Um. Yeah. No. People have shoved it back at him over the years. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna. Happen. I'm not gonna call out anyone. Yeah. I already. I already called out my boy Tracy. Yeah, so leave I, it. He's <laughs> gonna be mad at me after this because he's like, <laughs> "What am I doing? I'm, I'm clip bombing. What are they call it? Let's see you there right now. All right. Let's go to the next question. This one's from Svat. Um, what's so special about playing at home in Columbus? All you guys have so much success at the challenges there. Is it the surface atmosphere? Is it extra motivation? What is it? I don't mm-hmm. know. At home winning streak was crazy at one point. Yeah. The, well, they had 200. Uh, was until 2015. It was like a nine-year winning streak. Yeah, yeah that's uh, Oklahoma. I was yeah. There. You were there? Yeah. Wow. No, that's good research. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, just kidding. I researched that. <laughs> I prepared for the episode. I knew that yeah. this episode was going to happen, so I went to that match so we can talk about okay. it today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> that was um, when Oklahoma was number one in the country. Yeah, I think Ohio State was two. Okay. Um, but yeah, Ty, Ty's talked about that match in the past. I'm pretty sure the guy that clinched on had match points. It came down to like five or six. 
One, okay. It was when yeah. at the old facility when it was on the two mm -hmm. courts. Yeah, they I love the old facility, man. Metro, maybe I think. Okay. Kevin Mecca, I think it's who lost. Gotcha. Yeah. Sorry about it. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't there, so. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I mean, the atmosphere at home is is like unreal. I mean, I think a lot of people talk about Georgia being like amazing, like mm -hmm. they're happy, which their atmosphere is unreal, but like. If you look at how many matches we've lost at home in the last 20 years, it's like not even comparable. I mean, I think I think we've lost maybe two matches since like 2002 at home. It's my so. shots. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Georgia. Is, I played there my freshman year. That was my first road match I ever played. Was at was in Athens, and that was crazy. Like I I was like shaking. Like mm -hmm. the whole ble all the bleachers were going how crazy. I don't know if you guys line? played there. What's that? How many prayers did you say on the sideline? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to pray when Titan is like, if you uh, miss one more fucking ball. <laughs> <laughs> the whole team going to run. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no. I, <laughs> a lot of a lot of prayers for sure. Yeah, I played in the open facility. It was, mm -hmm. they had the two courts by itself and the four, right? It was like five or yeah. six would turn. Yeah. And then you had, yeah, they're like on you there, bro. Yeah. No, I played. I played number one that match. I played Trent Bride, and I lost the first set six zero in like twenty minutes. I was like, I couldn't hit the ball on the court. Like, mm. there was just people with spike helmets in the front, like banging on. Oh, the, was Georgia, okay. Yeah, yeah, at Georgia, yeah. So, uh, I came back second set, lost lost in three, but that was definitely like a welcome to college tennis moment mm -hmm. for me, for sure. Yeah. Last tennis part. Yeah. Uh, from Oscar, who's your least favorite team to play against? Wait. Yeah, who's your le least favorite team? Like, I guess, I guess you say. Basically, you wanted to know who, do you, who do you hate. Yeah. Which team do you hate? Who do I hate? Uh, or which team did your team hate? So we don't put it on you. That's I guess. Question, you I guess. Team. I mean, Michigan and Illinois were like our rivals in the mm -hmm. Big Ten. Um, I would say more so Michigan over like the three-year period. There was really one year where Illinois was very good, mm -hmm. um, and we had some, you know, bad. Some more shots. This guy, this is that different bang. Yeah, <laughs> <Son> I, <laughs> Below, Sorry, really. I mean, we were. I mean, I was like eight, eight and one, nine and one against Illinois, but Michigan, we we were competitive every year. Like it was, Stop. I mean, Styler, Fenty, and Maloney, those three guys. Um, it was, I mean, that that whole group was tough. We we went back and forth, you know, splitting matches and Big Ten championships. I think our last the last two years, um, but yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say I hated anyone on that team. You know, I know all those guys pretty well. Um, you just hate them as a unit. Just as a unit, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like as a whole, when you as go a to unit. <laughs> <laughs> when you go to Ohio State, like you, it's like you have to hate the team up north. Like mm -hmm. that's this is how it works. Um, so I mean, some of like the biggest matches I ever played in college were against Michigan. Um, so that was I got a lot of memories, a lot of memories from that for sure. For sure. Um, from Noah, no problem. This is you signed with Top Notch in January. What were the benefits of that, um, of that contract? And they said basically that most people don't know what happens when you sign with the agency. So can you get, can you give us some insight mm -hmm. into, I guess, the decision making and how, how that, much money how you made this year, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not open up my Chase account right now. But, um, yeah, no. So that's that's been great. Uh, I've been working with Top Notch mainly since like I've, I've been done with school. Um, so they've been helping me, you know, getting some, some deals. Like I, I secured a, a good deal with, with Yonex. Um, that's, no, I'm making, I'm making a little bit of money, which is, which is great, you know? Um, but you know, I've, as far as top notch isn't paying me, I'm, I'm paying them a percentage mm -hmm. basically of, of whatever deals they get me. So like, I don't really have to do much other than, you know, post some things on social media, whatever mm -hmm. they, they say I need to do. But, um. Yeah, James James Barris, my agent. He's been he's been great helping me getting deals and and working through uh, different things as far as my schedule and training and all that stuff. So. You get a side with Top Notch or somebody. Yeah, uh, Top Notch. You watch it. How did that come about though? The the relationship with them. Um, was, were there any other agencies that you could have um, signed with or considered? Well, I'm when I was a junior, there was a, there was a, a couple other agencies that I talked to, but I was obviously going to college, so that wasn't really a thing. But as far as uh, after I, I went to school, the only one was, was top notch. Yeah. So like I, I had a relationship with them for a few years because they run the challenger in Columbus. Yeah. Um, so like, I know the top notch guys pretty well and, and they had been talking to me for a couple of years before I ended up officially doing a deal with them. So I feel like it's not that common. Like, I mean, I guess 
you're one of the guys who are like the top American players graduating. So maybe they looked out for you, but in tennis, there's not many players below like 150 that have agents. Maybe, I don't even know if that's, mm -hmm. 150 might be generous either, I think. So yeah, I don't know. Good question. Yeah, we should find out. I'm not sure. Um, what, I mean, you said that there wasn't any necessarily anybody else that you were considering, but what is it about them that made you comfortable to sign with them? Um, well, I knew uh, they had worked with a lot of college players in the past. Um, I know that they work with JJ, JJ mm -hmm. Wolf, and, you know, I asked advice from JJ. Um, you know, he's a great guy. He, he helps out all the guys at Ohio State. Like, he sticks around with the program That's cool. a good amount. So um, he has the same agent as me, James. So, um, you know, obviously I, I asked around and, and uh, felt comfortable with him just because I had known a lot of those guys for, for the last couple of years. And, um, and yeah, also they're the only agency yeah. that, was, <laughs> that helps as well. <laughs> that, 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 uh, that helps too. But, but I was actually curious, like, what's it like for the pros to come back and train at Columbus? Are they supportive there of the pro yeah. guys that come back? Yeah, super supportive. I mean, like, over the years that I've been there, I mean, guys have always come back, you know, whenever they want, they can practice with the team. Um, for me, even like right now this summer, like, I just come back and it's like I'm not even off the team. Like, I'm still like, with all the guys and everything and it's it's uh it's it's really nice for cool. sure like same with like trotter trotter's been gone for a year and he still comes back to columbus right. now balling, and then huh? he's been balling one of yeah. the first challenges this year right balling. Right. yeah doing yeah. good at, well in doubles too right like he's yeah he's all like all around he's just doing it yeah through, winning a bunch. That's hit. He's doing um good. last question is from boule you should definitely ask him how he got his ties with food guy and what happens on court he's <laughs> hungry <laughs> Oh my gosh! All right, yeah. So I'm the, I'm the food guy. Um, that's that's my name. Um, yeah. No, basically, like I'm at school. I'm always the guy that like has to like ask Ty because like everyone's kind of scared to ask Ty. Like, when are we going to get food? Like, yeah. like we're hungry. Like, come on. So like I'm I'm the guy that always has to be like, hey, like let's go get some food. Like let's go get Chipotle. Like something like that. Um, and also like on the on the court, like sometimes I I need like some snacks or something, you know, to keep me going. Because sometimes practice goes a little long, and I I start to drift off towards mm -hmm. the end. <laughs> it's uh, like a running joke in the group. It's, you yeah, have to be the one to. Yeah, exactly. Okay. On the road, team dinners were together, or you just got money and you could do whatever you want. No, together. Together, together. Mm -hmm. always together. And yeah, what was the go-to spots on the road? McDonald's. McDonald's. Uh, not before. Not, not before the match. After the win, McDonald's. Um, before a match, I don't know. Ty always has like places that he really loves in like each city. Because, like, like, he goes stuff. to a lot of places. Like, he's been going to these places for years. So, mm -hmm. like, he has, like, like in Notre Dame, like, he has, like, this random diner that we drove, like, 30 minutes out of the way to, like, mm -hmm. go and eat there at dinner because, like, he's superstitious and we have to eat there the night before, you know? Okay. Um, but there's not, like, a specific, like, chain okay. or anything that we go to all the time. But. Hey, guys, quick break. Justin here from The Changeover. I'm going to talk about Pro Stringer. It's a great machine that I use, Jody uses, and a lot of other pros use as well. You can use it at home on the road really anywhere there's a tabletop surface it takes me about 25 30 minutes to string a racket on this machine it is easy to travel with fits in carry-on suitcase tennis bag no issues at tsa it's a big money saver and you can save even more when you use our code changeover to get 100 dollars off the machine back to the episode i think it's time for my favorite part of the show it's time for my least favorite part of the show this right. one is overrated mr kingsley we're gonna go first to three right questions. Okay. Um, just answer the question whenever you feel like you know it, and if you answer and you're wrong, it's a chance. It's a chance to answer it, and then you can start over and then you can answer again. Okay. I think after two wrong ones each, we'll just move on to the next question. But first to three, and it can be tennis, it can be math, it can be English, oh, you know, God, anything. This is just look, yo. You ready? Or we look at. Do you you know what the whoop band is? The what? The whoop. This thing? The whoop. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. My stress gets to a fucking maximum every time we get to this part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> you sweating. You see him pulling up on, on his thing? Oh, my God. All right, All let's, right. Go. let's do this. All right. Question one. What is an antonym of transparent? Opposite of transparent. <laughs> like, what's an antonym? Uh, is the same answer or me? It's anyone. It's, I just don't know the answer. Um, what, what the word is, is the opposite, opposite of what means 
has the opposite meaning of transparent. Why are you looking at me like that, bro? Nobody knows that. No, I love this. Uh, I'll close it off. What's the word? What's the word for like when you can't see through something? Yeah. I don't know. Opaque? What's the word? Is that opaque? <laughs> One zero. Brother? What's the word? Opaque. opaque. <laughs> when you can't see through something. Yeah, I thought these were going to be like tennis related questions. You got is... to trust yourself, brother. <laughs> That's one zero. Do any of us watch women's tennis here? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Making for a woman's, a woman's yeah. audience. All right. We got 99% males watching this. We're 99.4%. Yeah, we have 90% males watching this. 99.4. A lot. <laughs> and also 60% of you who watch this are not so. So subscribe to the channel, please. And so Jordy's at 1-0 one one right now. All yeah, right. 1-0, one 1-0. Zero, one zero. Let's go. Which women's player made back-to-back -back Grand Slam finals this year for the first time? Oh, Paulini. Oh, oh Paulini. Oh, I, I, I give it to you. I give it to okay, you. Okay. One one. Who did Novak Djokovic beat this year in the semifinals of Wimbledon? Uh, I'm not liking. Oh, Lorenzo Musetti. Two one to the guest. <laughs> Two one Kingsley. Wow. This is the worst session of the show. This is the absolute worst. Anybody good at math here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Four squared plus four. Twenty. Woo! Wow, that's fast. That's fast. That's that was fast. That's fast. I haven't done math. I haven't done math in years, man. That was not fast, bro. Let's go to two. We're okay. Battling. We're battling. Hey, I was, I was a sport industry major for a reason, man. Listen, all right. Listen, I've never won this game. It's two two, right? When it, when it takes all, I give you an option. We have geography or tennis. Tennis, right? Let's go geography. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Ready? What is the capital of Austria? Cooked. I'm cooked. I don't think. I think we both know, don't know. I'm going to give you a clue. I'm cooked. It starts with the letter V. Vienna. Vienna. We said oh, at the same time. Close, right, tennis. Tennis. Let's go tennis. Let's tennis. That's my guy. <sighs> You don't have a test. I have to prepare. I have, I have. Who did Yannick Sinner beat in the final train open this year? Daniel Medvedev. And Joey loses again. He still Yo. loses every time. <laughs> Yo, Cannon, thank you for joining us today. Um, we know you had a tough day in the court, and much respect to actually coming out here late in the night to get this done with us. Uh, best of luck for your next tournaments coming up, and wish you all the best. Great episode. Yo, you want a pro stringer? Tra traveling, you want to. Save money on the road. Save money at home. It fits in your suitcase and your carry-on. Good at this, please. It's good at. It's good at TSA. No problems. You are good. And use also, our code. Yeah, go on. Yeah, use our code changeover at the checkout. Get hundred dollars off the machine. I was told to introduce the new clamps to everyone. These are new clamps. I don't know if we have the old ones, but adjustable here is pretty easy. This is mine. Um, way better than the old clamps. Big improvement from Pro Stringer. So, we still got merch. We got hoodies, stuff like this. White, pink. We got some pullovers, t-shirts, um, stuff like that. Subscribe to the YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. And special thanks to the um, the Opal family for housing me this week. They've been amazing. Uh, we're actually at their house now. We were. Yeah. They've taken care of us. Did a few nights. Went fishing. They've given me meals, all that stuff. And uh, comment down below if you think that we should have the Oba family on the podcast, actually, because we think it'd be a great idea. Too. And shout out Deb, taking care of us this week, me and Josh. And shout out Oscar. Oscar said that you were going to flake on us. He said you lost, you were going to dip. Oh, uh, yeah. So Oscar <laughs> or Hoshin, you were wrong. This is the proof right here. <laughs> nope. And yeah, we'll see everybody next week. Thank you. <laughs>